Hello, I am Sierra Flores. I have about six years now experience in teaching. I've taught in lower grades, K2, and also in upper grades, 3-5. And so part of why I wanted to begin this video series is to shed some light on the teaching profession as it really is. And so the purpose of this first video is to give tips to beginning teachers because a lot of times you get thrown to the wolves. They don't teach you in college what to do if someone gets sick or has an accident during your first formal observation. They don't teach you what to do if there is a fire drill and one of your kids is missing. Real life situations happen like this and in college they don't teach you that. They prepare you for several other different types of things. But not real life, unfortunately. And so, I want to give you some tips for what you can do to survive your very first year or first years of teaching. My first tip, it's okay to ask questions. I don't know how many first, second, third year teachers have come to me in private and have asked, I'm afraid to ask questions because if I do, the team's going to think that I don't know what I'm doing and I don't really want anybody else to know that I don't have it all together. It's your first year. Of course you're not going to have it all together. That's okay. You're only expected to, first of all, survive and don't lose any of the kids. Literally, survive, be nice, don't lose any of the kids. If you do that during your first week, then that's a successful week. The next thing, number two, it's okay to not have it all together yet. One thing that I notice a lot of beginning teachers do, they compare themselves to everybody else around them, people who've been teaching for way longer than them, maybe even somebody in the same year as them, year one, year two, year three. They might act like they have it all together, but guess what? They don't. The next tip, your to-do list is never gonna end. That thing is gonna be so long and every second of every day you're gonna be adding on more and more and more and more and more to that list. It is gonna be longer than a receipt at CVS. So, instead of worrying about how long it is, you have to focus on prioritizing. What are the things that I have to do today Versus, what could I hold off and maybe do tomorrow, later on in the week, maybe over the weekend? And that's going to help you learn how to tackle more items on your to-do list. But you just got to make peace with it. It's not going to end. Next tip. You need to get a hobby that's not school. Look at school Instagrams looking at teacher Twitters, looking up Pinterest boards of perfectly Pinterested classrooms. You have to have something to do that's fun, that's mindless, that's not even school related. If you don't, then you're gonna end up facing something called burnout. And that's when you get to the point to where you don't even wanna come to school. The alarm goes off and you hit snooze to the very last second because you're like, I'm over it. I can't do this today. I don't, I don't want to. I'm done. So let's avoid that. Maybe run. Go for a brisk walk. Maybe you want to meet up with friends. Go to a brewery. Have um, wine nights on Wednesdays. Something that you can do to get your mind off of school because it's hard. It's very hard in the beginning because you want to be about all school all the time. And so the second that you're not all school all the time, you feel like you're lacking in some other area or you feel like you're not being a good teacher because you're not giving it your all. Well, I'm telling you now, you got to learn how to turn that stuff off from time to time. Please don't talk about school all the time. I remember during my first year, I was so excited. I'm going out here. I'm changing the world. My kids are the cutest kids you've ever seen. And second grade is the best. And let me tell you all these things we did today. 
and then 30, 35, 50. An hour later, I would still be talking about what I did at school that day because for me, it's just the most exciting thing ever. But what I, what I failed to realize was that the person I was talking to, their eyes had already glazed over from boredom. So what I ended up having to do was limit the amount that I did talk about school. Me and my boyfriend at the time, now he's my husband, we decided to only share about our jobs for 10 minutes max because people that don't work in your field don't want to hear about your everyday life. And I know that sounds so harsh. I know it does. But it's realistic. And people are too polite to tell you otherwise. They will listen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. And they will nod. And they will give you um, the best show of their life to show that they're listening and paying attention. But I promise they don't want to hear about it. Whenever you hang out with your teacher friends and your significant others are around, just know ahead of time, when teachers get with teachers, they will talk about teachers, talk about teaching, school, every possible thing. And it's very hard to get a teacher to stop talking about school. It's very hard. And so what I've noticed from my experience is that whenever I'm around teachers, we do teacher talk for a very long time. And then if I take a break from that and I would look around, I would see all the husbands, the girlfriends, the wives, everyone around just so bored, just waiting for an out, some way to leave the table to go get a drink, or somebody else just dying to start a new topic of conversation. And so what? So whenever you're hanging out with your non-teacher friends, or if you're with teachers and significant others, Please try your best not to let teaching dominate the conversation. So one of my biggest tips, and this is hard for me, I still struggle with this today. Do not, do not, do not, do not partake in gossip. I know from experience how easy it is to get swept up in, ooh, did you see what she did on Facebook over the weekend? Did you see her Insta story? Oh, look at what she's wearing today. Can you believe she taught that lesson? I taught that to my kids last year. They're in a totally different grade now. Why is she still teaching that? It's very, very easy to get swept up in someone else's drama. But I'm telling you now, if you're in a situation and people are talking about other teachers around you, it's better for you to find a way to excuse yourself. Because even if you don't say anything, you're there and you heard the conversation and your name is automatically associated with that. And it becomes, even though you didn't say anything, oh, well, she was there. She was right there whenever they were talking about you. So then, because you didn't leave, now you're a part of this swirling mess of drama. And you don't want to get swept up in that. Make it a habit early on not to talk about someone, but to talk to them instead. Even if it's an uncomfortable conversation. So it's better for you yeah. to just talk to them directly instead of talking about them, complaining about them. Because I promise you, it'll get around. And you're not going to want it when it comes back around to you. I promise. So, don't partake in drama. Don't be a gossip girl. On the topic of planning meetings, a lot of times I've heard newer teachers say, I don't feel comfortable speaking up in planning because I'm new. I've only been doing this for like six months. Some of these people have been doing it for 10 years. What do I know? What can I really bring to the table that she doesn't know? A lot. You bring a lot to the table. You're fresh out of college. You're fresh out of lateral entry from the field that you just came from. And there's a lot that you know from your life experiences, from your student teaching placement, that you know that you could bring to the table that we probably didn't even think about. Because some of us are literal dinosaurs in education, and you're fresh out. And so you have really great ideas, and they deserve to be shared. So please... 
if you have a thought, speak up, say it. We love it whenever you get involved and whenever new teachers participate in the conversation. You have to find a teacher buddy because there are going to be some days when you are going to have the worst day imaginable. Every single lesson goes wrong. All the behavior issues you have in your class, they gang up on you in one day, in one moment, and just drive you to tears. Who are you going to turn to? You can't stop the lesson and say, hang on kids, watch yourselves. I'm going to go to the broom closet and cry. I may have done that before. You got to find somebody you can cry to, somebody you can vent to, somebody that you can just let it all out to. Because you're going to try to talk to your significant other and they're going to try their best to help you, but it's just not the same. So one of my last tips is to develop a teacher crush. And so what does that mean? It does not mean go find a hot teacher down the hall and ask them out for dinner tomorrow night. That's not what that means. What I mean by teacher crush is someone who you admire. Someone who, when that teacher walks down the hall, it's just rainbow and sunshine and sparkles. They light up a room. Someone whose class class is very well behaved in the halls and in class. Someone who has a classroom that runs like a well-oiled machine. Kids love to learn there. Kids can't wait to get to school and they don't want to leave because that teacher makes school so fun for them. Find that person and start to ask them questions. How did you become this amazing being that you are? What is your teaching philosophy? How could I take my teaching up to the next level? Because I want to do over here so that what you're doing over there. I don't expect you to take every single tip that I just laid out for you and put it to use immediately on day one. I don't expect that. That's not realistic. What I do expect that you would do is to take the tips and use the ones that work for you and get rid of the ones that don't. So you have to think about what advice is good advice, what do I want to save for later on, and what am I just totally getting rid of because that is trash and is not going to serve me at all. Everything I say is not golden. It is not right. It is not the end-all, be-all. These are just things that have happened in my experience that I found that have really helped me. Some of these things no one taught me. I had to learn them myself by going through the motions. And so what I want to do is to help someone else, anybody else, be able to be successful without having to make all the mistakes that I made. So feel free to reach out to me. I do have a Twitter account. You can follow my blog. Um, you can follow me here on YouTube. Come on, hello. So I will be looking forward to your comments and then I'll post the next video next week. Enjoy your week. Everything I say is not golden. It is not right. It is not the end all be all. These are just things that have happened in my experience that I found that have really helped me. Some of these things no one taught me. I had to learn them myself by going through the motions. And so what I want to do is to help someone else, anybody else, be able to be successful without having to make all the mistakes that I made. So feel free to reach out to me. I do have a Twitter account. You can follow my blog. Um, you can follow me here on YouTube. Come on, hello. So I will be looking forward to your comments and then I'll post the next video next week. Enjoy your week.